Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweaker Man video. So today I'm going to start doing the restoration work on the cabinets of these um, Tannoy reference gold speakers. So um, if you can see here I've already stripped one down. So I've, um, I've stripped it, uh, sanded it took the base off we're going to be making some new bases for it um, on the top here I've filled the veneer then the edges that's chipped off which I'm going to do some false grain over the top of I've had to take out the insulation uh, to be able to get the front baffle off so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, camera on the tripod and uh, we're going to dismantle this speaker so what we need to do now um, is we need to turn the speaker over because uh, we need to take the back off. Now this is very heavy so I want to be really careful with this. Always best to use two people to do this really but I'm used to working on my own so. So we're going to undo the uh, The screws on the back of here so we're not going to touch the back of these uh, panels the back panel here at all because we don't really want to um, alter the color of this because it's got the um, the tannoy sticker on there and if you try to mask up the tannoy sticker what you'll find out is uh, when you remove the masking tape it's most definitely going to pull off the sticker which we don't want to do because that's the original part of it. Um, so now is the part of trying to ease this up without damaging the edges. There we go. Right. Keep that down there. Right, okay. So I did say these were called uh, Tannoy reference gold but they're called tannoy monitor golds so that's the back panel again uh, these have already been dis disconnected beforehand so we want to just rest that onto there that way around so we don't damage any of the paintwork on the back too much i'm going to move those in a minute anyway so what we've got to do is we need to take the uh the speaker itself out so there's some uh, big bolts in there um, and then we've got to remove the back the, the baffle the front baffle now that to do that we've got to uh, release the uh, the insulation that's inside here and I'll put it on its side so you can see it now this is quite interesting on the inside of this so for some reason, the port on the front, the base port, has been has been covered up with a piece of plywood. Now on this one, it hasn't. It's um, it's really strange. I, I don't know. I don't know what's gone on with these, but um, I have a feeling they're 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 two separate speakers, and they were used for two two different things, and then they were put together um, as a pair. But who knows? So what we need to do first of all here is we need to take all these staples out along here to be able to get to the screws that are holding the baffle on the front. So what we need is we need one of these, which is a staple remover, a pair of pinchers uh, and a mallet. So in able to get these out, we have to just take all these all the staples out. Now what's inside these for dampening, or damping I should say, not dampening. I keep saying dampening, sorry, it's damping. So I keep getting picked up on it. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a black felt. Now this is just used in the upholstery trade. Uh, it's a cheaper version of what we use as cotton felt. But this is like mixed fibre felt. It's just all... Uh, bits of old old fabric and all that all churned up and then made into this 
So uh, that's what they're using in the inside of this. Um, I actually prefer to use wool, proper lamb's wool, which is the best for damping the inside of resonance on a cabinet. Um, but in those days when they produced these speakers, they probably didn't really, they wasn't so up on it as they are now as a tweaking that we do. We do everything we can just to improve sound quality as much as we can really, but right. And what I'll do is I'll just take these ones out and then uh, I'm going to uh, shut the camera off and I'm going to crack on with the uh, removing of the rest of it and I'll show you how I remove the, uh, the the front baffle so I'll be back in a second and we'll uh, we'll carry on with that so here you can see I've removed the insulation there and there we've got a series of screws there just holding the front baffle in so um, so I'll be unscrewing those in a minute once I remove all the insulation. So we're going to start taking out the uh, the drive unit now. I've just got to take all these screws out and that. And the nuts and bolts in the washers. Okay, we'll put over under here for the minute. We don't really, what we're doing is we're storing the, uh, the drive units so there's nothing that happens to them because they've got to go back in again. We don't want any damage to occur. So this is just like a a plastic cover of some sort, or whether it's Bakelite or something. It's like a cover that covers over the magnet. Right, so that's that. So all we've got to do now is lift out the uh, the woofer. So I'm going to put the uh, tripod over here. Right, so I've just got to lift out the the woofer now. There we go. That's the size of the woofer, and um, I'm going to measure it for you to tell you the size of it. But I need to find a tape measure now. Um, right, okay, I'll do that in a second. So I'm here in the AV room now with the with the woofers out and if you can see that now that is a 15 inch woofer and the other one is considerably smaller and it's a 12 inch woofer so uh, interesting so let's crack on with the restoration right so i've removed the insulation all around i've kept the stapled at each end so i can just tuck it back in again and then staple it down either end so we just need to unscrew these screws out of the uh out of the front baffle so we can remove that we don't want anything uh, happening to the front of that and we've got the new grill cloth come through already we're just waiting for the tannoy badges to turn up 
Uh, they're not very, they're not very uh, cheap. Those tannoy badges. They, I think they're about twenty-eight pound each, something like that. Thirty pound each. So they're quite expensive. So I'm going to remove all of these screws from all around. So there's three at the top and the bottom, and three, uh, four at the sides. The only good thing about old stuff is it's always more accessible than modern stuff. Modern stuff's all sealed and you can't get into it very easy. And uh, and this is what I like about when you're restoring old stuff, you can uh, you can really get into it. Things were built to last in those days, opposed to now. Where a lot of stuff's rubbish, rubbish is made. Companies want to keep you going back to buy more all the time. Right, okay, we've got a couple of screws. Three at the bottom here as well. One, another one down here. I'm getting. One more to go. Right, that's it. Now, we should just be able to lift off the front baffle now because it's not glued in place. Now, if I was making a set of speakers today, I would probably glue them in. I think it, it's better to keep the, the cabinet a lot more rigid and strong opposed to uh, just screwing them together. So we'll get it on there and then we should just be able to lift this up. Here we go. So that's the baffle. Um, as I say, this is, that is where the port is, but they've blocked it off for some reason. Who knows why? Um, anyway, so we're gonna put the baffle down here for now. I need to, uh, have a tidy up in here now and move some stuff around and I'll be back in a second. So we've put the uh, the cabinet on its side now. Now the bases of these, the plinth bits at the bottom on this one is fine. So I'm just going to do a bit of filling on those and leave those ones. This one at the bottom's totally shot. So I'm going to make a new one for it. So what we're going to do is start showing you how to strip the cabinet here. So what you need is some uh, paint stripper. Now, this can only be brought up at a professional suppliers nowadays. So this comes from Morels in uh, High Wycombe, which is my nearest Morels site. You can use other companies that supply this. You can also buy this off of eBay, of course, as well. But you can't buy this in a DIY shop anymore. All of the stripper they sell these days is an environmental friendly stripper, which is good. But it doesn't work. It's utter rubbish. It won't take lacquer off for a start. And even if it would take paint off, it would probably take you about a year to get it off with it. So, so what we have to do is we need a, a stripper pot or a paint kettle, which this is a metal paint kettle. And we're just going to put some stripper in here for a minute. I've nearly run out of this. So I've just got enough to do this job and then I've got to order some more. Um, we're going to need some gloves as well because... Uh, this paint stripper is uh, extremely, extremely bad on the skin. And we're going to need some wire wool as well. And we also need a scraper. So this is a scraper just to take off the, uh, the lacquer as I, as, as, as the, uh, I'm getting my words tongue tied now, as the, um, the stripper penetrates the, uh, the lacquer, the old polish. So we're just going to liberally put a nice coat of this over. And this will take a, a little bit to penetrate. It penetrates very quickly, uh, really, compared to what that environmental friendly stuff does. That, that You have to leave that on for about two hours. It just doesn't even... I've tried it and it's utter rubbish. But um, that seems the way we're going at the moment. So we're going to have to just uh, go with that. 
Right, okay, so you can see that the surface is already pickling up now. But this does take a, a few attempts to get this off. What we're going to do is we're just going to do the bottom part there as well, the pimp at the bottom. There's a couple of holes in there which I'll fill and, uh, and do a bit of false grain over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to strip one side and then I'm going to crack on with it and then uh, come back once I've stripped it. Now this this speaker this side wasn't in as bad condition as that one so that's why I've done that one first because I wanted to crack on with it and uh, this one is in a hell of a lot better condition for some reason so um, Anyway, so we get our scraper. There we go. I was like putting pressure on and digging it in a bit as I'm pulling it back. Because it really gets off the finish. And the quicker you can get off the finish, the less uh, stripper you have to use. And this stripper now has got very expensive as well. Looking at about £40 for a 5 litre. Of that stripper now when i first started this business which was back in uh, 1990 you can imagine that stripper was about 11 pound <laughs> a long time ago right so there we go that is all the muck that's come off the side there which i'm going to put in my bag now over here uh we'll just go along the edge there take it off there Now, although you shouldn't get this on your hands, my hands are quite hardened to a lot of this. Now, right, okay, so we're going to go, oh, yes, you want to take that off of there. See, stripping, paint stripping, is not that difficult, really. It's just knowing how to do it properly and uh, having some patience with it. So we're going to give another coat now, and then we're going to wire wool it off. And uh, hopefully that should do it for this side. But if you noticed on these uh, these speakers, the tops are the ones that are in the bad, the worst condition, the tops. Now this one, again, the, the other one was in a lot worse condition than this one. This one's got very minimal veneer missing. So I'll only have to do some light filling on that, opposed to that one that was, uh, that was in quite a bit of a state. Now I could have done, I could have re-veneered the tops, but I'm quite confident that I can... Uh, bring the tops up looking great with a false grain over the bits and uh, and you won't even notice it so um so there we go so we take our piece of wire wall now and we're just going to rub with the grain and go across the grain a little bit at the ends but try to keep it with the grain See, that's all the, the excess lacquer and the stripper coming off onto the wire wall. Some of you guys might have done this before. But um, if you haven't, so there we go. Oh, this is the way to do it. So I gave that, that other cabinet there, I'll give it a really intense sanding yesterday. I took ages on it. So I really want these to look the bee's knees once they're done. And always cut wire wool with scissors. Don't try to pull it because you, you're liable to have a very bad cut on your hand if if it goes uh, if the wire wool strips across your skin, which I've done many a times when I'm in a rush. So if you're rubbing across the grain, remember to go with the grain over the top of it afterwards. Although we're going to be sanding these as well, so we'll be taking those out. Any marks. There we go. Really there. Make this one a bit 
see. There is no hard and fast rule to do anything in life, I don't think. It's, uh, it's whatever suits you and how you feel comfortable with doing stuff. So um, I'm a bit unorthodox in my style a lot of the time. So uh, there we go. So that, that, that's one side stripped. Um, I'll stand it up so you can see. Here we go. So that's one side stripped. Now, if you see the top, it's in a bit of a bad state as well. Um, and then this is the other side that I'm going to strip next. So I'm going to crack on with this now. Once this is stripped, I'll come back and show you it. So here we have the second cabinet totally stripped now. Um, as you can see there, the tops come up better. Uh, the veneer missing on the edges, which we need to fill. And down here, it's all been stripped nicely. So, we've just got to get and move on to the sanding of this and the filling of the bits of veneer. And then, uh, once we've done that, we can uh, crack on with the sealing them up. And then, uh, doing some false grain over the... Uh, the field bits on the top and then we can then start polishing them so uh, we'll go on to doing some uh, sanding now so uh, let's crack on with that first right so I sanded the sides and I've done some filling on the bottom um, so now I'm going to show you how to do the filling on the top it's pretty easy this is uh, only um, isopon and benzene peroxide paste which is like a car filler but what happens is it goes really rock solid so it's a two pack filler so i'm just going to put some onto there first and then we'll mix the uh, benzene peroxide paste with it to give it a good old uh, mixed together now you could also slice little bits of veneer in but the problem is with these um, the boards on here is that the veneer is quite thin so it's uh, it's easier to do the uh, filling and do the and do a paint finish over the top of it like a false grain effect which you will see me do later so we're gonna put the filler on there now there was a little bit that was loose under there and I'm gonna get some the two pack under there to glue it down because once this goes off it goes rock solid there we go <clears throat> that's quite cold today so i haven't put the heating on here in here yet because uh, i don't want the filler to go off too fast because i, I want to work it first Right, so I'm coming down to this end now. Thank you. 
Right, so I think that's that for now. Um, we'll leave that to dry now for about half an hour just to make sure it's really gone solid. I mean, it dries in five minutes, but um, we'll give it we'll give it about half an hour before we start sanding back and um, show you how that goes. Okay, be back in a minute. So while I'm leaving the other cabinet to dry. <coughs> what I'm going to be doing now is I've already made up the base part, the plinth for the bottom of the second, or should I say the first cabinet that I stripped and uh, sanded. So this is it, this is teak veneered. So uh, this comes off of a piece of old furniture, which is handy because it keeps it in keeping with, with these cabinets. This comes from the 70s, this uh, teak veneered board. So what we're going to be doing is fitting this up now. Now what we need to do is to find our drill, wherever that's gone. One second I shall find the drill. There it is, it's over here. Okay, so we've got to drill some holes to, um, to screw it to the, the, the main body of the cabinet here. So we're going to drill a few holes down with a six mil drill bit. Keep it nice and straight. That's one. Go to the middle there. Two. Then the last one. Right. Okay. So then we need to draw drill two in these uh, two in these uh, end piece side pieces. This one. <clears throat> right, so what we need to do is to countersink all those now, all those holes. So I've got to make sure we get the countersink on the right side. <clears throat> so that's that and that's going to be that's that way up right okay so we've got quite a, a big screw head that's going in here so we really need to give it quite a nice countersink Make sure that the uh, camera's still filming all right. Perfect.
so as you can see i've already made these pieces up it was just uh it was easier to do that right okay so we've got those pieces here now so we just need to get them in the right position and now i need to find my tape measure which is here 25 mil that side Leave it up to there. Right. Leave it up to there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dry run first and I'm going to screw it together as a dry run and then I shall take it apart and glue it then just to make sure that I get it right. Okay, so that looks about right there. Double check, bring that over very slightly. Same with that one. Well, let's just measure that again there. Uh, 22 mil that side. Still needs to go over that way a fraction. Right, that's about right there. Make sure all those are in the right place because once we screw it, it's going to be too late then. Right. <coughs> So we're using these, which are six by six razor screws. They're nice and big and bulky to really hold the uh, the plinth in place well. I haven't bothered uh, uh, self-tapping the um, pilot hole in the. Uh, Okay, like right, let's put shot back there again. Test it with that one there, that's about right. Bring that one in there. Pretty perfect there. Yeah. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will pilot that a little bit. It will just uh, make it easier for the screw to go in there. And you need a tiny bit. <coughs> That's it. Just so I can locate the, uh, the hole better. That's lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. That's pretty good. Right, okay, so let's do this one now. And get this in. Right, okay. So now we've got to do is fit these into the right position. So what I've done is I've left these slightly bigger over very slightly. So now all I've got to do is just to trim them back slightly on the uh, on the disc sander there. So I just want to square up the corner slightly better. So we're just going to. You can tickle it in on there to make it dead perfect because sometimes a saw, those uh, mitre saws are never perfectly square. 
Right, okay, so that's that. So I just need to take a tad off the back there. Smidging off the back here. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect that one let's do the same with this one this one only needs a very small amount off of there right there we go so let's just pilot these in there again now I've got that dead right there on the corner I always take my time on these bits just to make sure that they are perfect. So what I'm going to do afterwards, we'll just unscrew it and we'll glue it up and put it back together because we want to make sure it's all nice and glued up um, so it doesn't move or go anywhere. Because that's what we don't want to happen. <coughs> Sorry, got a bit of a throat today. Okay, that's perfect. Right, there we go. And then what we're going to be doing is just fitting these blocks in the corners just to stiffen it up. So let's take it apart again now. <coughs> and we'll, um, we'll glue it up. So now, I've got to find the glue now again. Let me go off and find the glue. Right, so I found the glue and some wet wipes to wipe any excess glue off. So what I'll do is just to put some glue along the base of this bit. Spread all the glue out nice and evenly when you're gluing something up. Just don't put a bead on it. Make sure the whole surface is covered because it'll give you a lot stronger gluing surface, a wider gluing surface. We won't bother putting any more on the end of that one yet because we've got to move the middle one. Um, so I'll just get that into place first and screw that down. Again. Nice to take your time and do a good job of stuff opposed to rushing things. Nothing worse than rushing. Right, that's that. Let's 
this here. Right, now this one. Right, now what we're going to do is just a wipe, pull away any excess glue along there with, uh, with a wipe. Make sure there's nothing there because we don't want it to interfere with the polishing afterwards. Otherwise you'll see light, lighter bits. If glue dries on there, you'll see lighter bits when it comes to polishing it. Right, so that's that one. Right, this one. I'm going to leave that on its side for a minute so I don't have to keep on right, get loads of glue on the uh, mitre there loads of glue on there right let's put that into place okay, that's perfect Right, let's just screw this back in. And that one. And that one. And then I need to clean away any excess glue again. Get another wet wipe. Keep changing the wipes all the time because it stops any glue. Get doesn't matter on the back as much but uh, still if you're going to do a job you might as well do it properly um, get the glue off the corner of the mitres as well right last one here then we can glue our blocks on and then that's our uh, new plinth made I've just copied the old one but I haven't changed anything as such go along there again Right, get that into place again now. So much better doing a dry run first, because otherwise then you've got mess about sorting it out if it don't go very well, and then you'll have glue everywhere as well. There we go, that's perfect. That's it. Right. Now to give it strength, okay, I mean it will, once this dries it will be quite strong, but what we want to do really is we want to really strengthen it up in the corners and uh, so we're going to use these uh, oak blocks that I've cut here, okay, so we're just going to glue them on, all they're going to be is a rub joint, so just put some glue on two surfaces of this, on the side ones, on the back this is what they've done originally. Um, okay, I'm going to make sure it's all over it. All you do is you just push it in place like that. And you just leave it to dry. What I'm going to do is put a small clamp on there just to keep it in place. I'll get all the excess glue off first. Push it right to the back there. There we go. Now I've got some some nice clamps like these. You see, and all I'll do push it over there like that and get it in place. Push it down again. Just to hold it in place. There we go. I'm just going to do that on the outer ones. Right, do the same with this side. Now 
Now these are really sort of good clamps when you're doing bits. So you just want to hold it in place. You'll find when you put it on there, it'll move. So you've just got to move it down again. Get it into place there, like so. Right, that's perfect. Now these ones won't need any clamps in the corners. They're just going to be uh, glued on uh, three surfaces. And then... Uh, just in the place. That one's in. All the excess glue off. Right, so that is the uh, that is the plinth done. Here's a close-up there. So this takes a bit of time to do, but um, it looks really good. So uh, yeah, that's going to be well smart once it's finished. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute when we get on to the next part, which is sanding down the other cabinet. Right, so I've got the first cabinet sealed up. So I'll give it about four coats. And... Um, there's the new plinth that went on it, so that matches perfectly. So all we've got to do now is to start doing some uh, touch-ups on all the filler. Some false grain over the top of it uh, to colour it all in. So, uh, But I'm going to show you how to seal this one up. So this is the one at the moment. This is the, one, the unsealed one. Um, this has got the original plinth on that one. So we've got to do a bit of a uh, touch-up on, uh, on the filler in places. So let's get this onto the tripod and I'll uh, show you how to do that. So to do the sealing or, or the, the hole polishing, I use this product from Morels, which is heat resistant PAL polish. Now this is a form of a French polish, but it has uh, uh, some shellac in it and resins that are dissolved in alcohol. So it makes it a lot more hard wearing and it's heat resistant at the same time. And then we water it down with methylated spirits. Um, I've run out of meths now, so I've just got to go and pick some more up. Um, and then we need a, I'll just use a pot. I, I just use a plastic container and I'll put a tin foil in it. Then I can just whip the tin foil out and then put new one in it all the time. And then we just use some stockinette rag, uh, because this is just a sealing process. And, um, we also need some disposable gloves. Now, I usually use latex ones, but for some reason, the price of them have gone through the roof and it's getting ridiculous. So I've gone on to these vinyl ones at the moment. So let's pop a glove on. So I've been in here this morning early. I've got that one sealed up. So I'm going to show you how to seal this one up now. So it's just, uh, uh, put the uh, stocking net into a pad, just fold it up into a nice smooth pad like that. I dip it in the polish like that. I come around the top there to start with. Okay. At the moment, we're giving this uh, fairly thick coats to start with. 
uh, just to seal it up and then we'll be touching the filler in and doing some false grain work on, on the top parts and uh, we'll give it another few coats and then we're going to be denibbing it back with some uh, <coughs> thousand uh, Lubra seal paper and uh, so you can see the grain that comes out as soon as we get the polish going flowing onto the surface of it right my camera works not ever, never that great so I can't uh, very difficult for me to show you all around all the sides of this um, you'll get the gist of how it goes I mean I've been a French polisher now since uh, well I've, I started my apprenticeship <coughs> in um, 1987 when I left school and then I set my own business up at the, uh, in uh, 1990 same business I run today doing uh, restoration so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll give this the coat and I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so now we've got to go on to the top here. And always be uh, mindful of any, any runs or anything you get. I don't generally get many runs. But um, you can do with this polish, it's quite um, liquidy. Especially when you water it down with mess. So let's take the uh, the camera off now and I'll show you. So here we go, that's one coat on there now. You can see where where the filler is in places there. This is two pack, it goes rock solid so it never moves once it's in there. There we go, move on up. And that's the top there. So the polish is drying on the top there. Now you always have to do this in a, a, a well ventilated area but something that's warm as well because uh, otherwise the polish will bloom. So look, I'm going to crack on and do the, uh, the rest of the ceiling and then I'll be back once we start doing the uh, touch ups to the filler. So while I'm waiting for a few bits to dry I just thought I'd show you this uh, the crossover unit here. If I can get close to it without the camera coming out of focus there we go so this is the same crossover unit for the 15 inch and the 12 inch woofer so I think what this indicates to me is that perhaps the, these are just um, two separate speakers and apparently they were sold separately and um, we have one 12 inch and one 15 inch I did want to take this apart to show the inside, but it, it won't come apart and I don't want to force it. So I want to see what sort of capacitors are inside and that, but I can't get it apart. So I don't really want to ruin it. So I'm going to leave that. So uh, onwards to the rest of the restoration of the cabinets. So we're about to do the uh, false grain over the filler here. Okay, so we've got filler either side. So there, this is two pack. And uh, I'm going to show you the one I've already done, which I'm still doing a bit more work on. You can see it there. That was the edges there. 
So these are still preliminary coats. Okay. So to do this job, what we need is our earth pigments. So we've got all different colours here. Burnt cyana, raw cyana, burnt turkey umber, raw umber, white and yellow ochre. And we've got a uh, Venetian red ochre. So, let's crack on with this now and I'll show you how we do this. So, let's start by pouring some uh, polish into our, into our pot here. A little bit of polish in there. Because <clears throat> we want to use that now to start making up the colours. Now, primarily, um, teak is like a, an orangey colour. Slight tinge of uh, brown in it as well. So, in able to get to that <clears throat> sort of colour, we're going to start off with raw cyana. Okay. So we need to mix up a bit of raw cyana in there. And this has got so many different tones in it anyway. And now to give it a slight more uh, yellow colour, we're going to mix in some yellow ochre into there. Just to smooth it in a bit more, just to make it more yellowy base. Now it's still too yellow at the moment, so we want to put a very small amount of... Um, burnt cyanide in there just to give it a slightly and then followed by a, a tinge of uh, Venetian red ochre which is going to make it go very red so what I need to do is to mix some more yellow in there Sometimes it takes a bit of time to uh, to do all this to get to the right colour you need. Okay, so I'll take some of that over there. Now, that to me, that's looking quite close. We just need to mix now a piece of um, very bit of uh, brown, uh, raw brown umber in there. To give it a slight browner colour. Right, let's just tip that back there. A slight bit more. Okay, I think we're getting there now slowly. Right, okay, so let's turn the uh, camera around to the um, to the work itself here. And we'll start off down the bottom here, in that corner. So let's um, so I'm going to start touching this in here on the corner first. I'm to lift that up a little bit here. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to overlap loads of coats to replicate depth in the grain. So now we're uh, moving on to our second coat of it. Go along there, any bits of fill up. Let's 
come around this side and get a bit of view of it, that's it. So effectively what we're doing at the moment is just um, getting the background colour to start with before we can draw any grain in. This is very similar colour to the tones of the background of the wood. Now the problem with wood of course is um, and grain is when you look at one angle it can look different to another angle so you get hints and tones and and um, that's the hardest part so when you look one way it looks as good as it does the other way now it's very hard to replicate that so what we do is we have to fade once we've touched on the uh, false grain we need to fade we need to tint the wood down over the top with a milky constituent cons um, get my words uh, consistency and uh, so what it does is it fades the grain back and then we lift the grain back up again with a tinted polish so we use a bit of um, a bit of a very tiny bit of red mahogany in there just to give it a slight yellowy red color over the top to bring it back which I'll show you in a minute once we get to that stage So there we go, you can see that the uh, colour's coming along and you've got a slight stripiness in it because that's what we want to keep it to, a stripiness so it looks like a, a teak because you've got a lot of stripiness in teak. Um, so I'm going to mix up another colour now and then we're going to start doing a bit of grain over the top. So now we want to change the colour slightly because there's hints and tones in the grain. So we're just going to make it slightly browner looking now. Take the red away. And then we're going to do stripes of, of, of it over the grain again. Okay. Just so it gives a another hint of a uh, slightly different colour in it. So here we go again, let's go around this side. Leaving some of the background colour still on there. We just want to bring some stripes through. Right, so we'll leave that to dry for a minute and then we're going to mix another colour up just to um, 
just to build up the depth. As you can see, it's coming on slowly. It takes a while. It's like, yeah, you know, it, it can take ages. This you have to just feel your way with it all. So now we want to do some dark grain. So just going to mix some of this in here to do some dark grain, and we're going to use some burnt turkey umber because it's quite dark to give it a nice dark grain through there so here we go with the with the dark parts of the grain now what we want to do is we want to just drag it back slightly there we can take it right up And if you can see this piece here that runs through there, we can run that straight through like that. There we go, we're getting there slowly. Um, just a bit more on that bit there. So on this particular bit here, there's... See, when I stand around one side of the uh, of the wood, it looks slightly different. And when I move around, I pick up on other tones that are in it. There we go. Brush those through there. One there that comes right the way through there and up to there. There we go. A couple more through here. There we go. So we're getting there slowly with it. So if I pan the camera around to the other side, you can see that as well. So the other side is uh, looking quite good now. We've got the grain running through right to the end. So now all we've got to do is start just filling in the um, different tones now in and out. So I'll do a bit of that and I'll be back in a minute. Right, you can see how well this is going now. Look at that. It's pretty good. I've been doing this a hell of a long time, so I am uh, about blowing my own trumpet. I am pretty good at this. Um, so by the time we start doing more to it, you won't even notice that this is false grain over it. It'll look just a part of the grain. So uh, I'm going to crack on now and get these up to uh, a pretty good standard. Then I'll be back to show you how the rest of it works. So you can see how well that's looking now. I'm pretty pleased with that. So now what I've done is I've mixed up this milky consists consists. Oh, I can't get my words out again. Consistency um, with polish, some uh, white titanium white, and some yellow ochre. So all we're going to be doing is just uh, dipping it in here, and then we're going to do a couple of coats of this to fade the grain back a bit. If you couldn't hear a noise, it's the fan heater in the back going. So what that's basically doing is it's fading back the grain and uh, and making it more um, oh, what's the words opaque looking. I think that's the words. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. So I've flatted both of the tops back now using this, which is a um, 
a thousand grit so um, all I do is I just flat it back like that until it flowers up you can see the flowering happening and then and then we just wipe it down with a cloth afterwards to get all the dust off and that so now we're going to be tilt tinting these tops again with with uh, uh, another milky consists consistency <laughs> can't get the words out today so let's crack on with that so i've made another um load of polish up which i've tinted with earth pigments okay so i'm going to show you these now right okay so we're just going to uh i'm going to come through the back here a minute it's a bit awkward I'm filming this on my own again here so what we're going to be doing is using our polish dipping it in in a rag and that and then just misting over the surface again here Okay, so we're going to do a few coats of this on here before we start tinting it with uh, with some light fast staining with the polish which is a very good way of uh, building up colour. So now we're just going to mop around the edges as well now. And this is going to look the bee's knees this is when this is done. You won't even notice that this is filler in here. So there we go again, come up here. So we've got to give this another few coats of this and uh, as I say just to build up the colour so I shall be uh, back once I've done that. So I've coated the uh, the cabinets with more polish now. Okay, all nice. So I've got to leave those to dry now for a bit. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to flat them back and do the uh, the finishing. Same with this one. It's looking very smart, very smart indeed. So we're not finished yet. <laughs> this is a long process to do a nice job on these speakers. So... Um, so yeah, I'll be back shortly uh, once they've dried off and we'll denib them back and start the top coats. So the tops have dried again and I just want to give them a bit of a denib back just to take any imperfections out the surface because when you're doing hand polishing um, you get bits of dust and that that settles in there. So uh, we're just going to give it a quick denib. You can go... Well, you should go with the grain, but um, I uh, I tend to go in circles with this because I'm trying to uh, get a very nice finish with it. So I'll go give this uh, some more coats on the top of these, clear coats now. Um, that's what I've done. And so I'm denibbing these back, and now I'm going to be tinting the top. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to use to do that. Um, it's got a really nice smooth finish on there now. Turn this round. That's the front there. Yeah. So because we've given it the top a milky uh, finish on there, enable now so the sides look slightly darker. Um, I'm always getting tongue tied when I'm talking on it. <laughs> so what I need to do is I need to introduce some colour back to the tops so the milky sort of finish that I put on there what it does it fades back the grain and it fades back the false grain as well so it it helps to make it look like real grain when I start to put the uh, the top finish on there right okay so that's that so now all I need to do now is to wipe these over like this that one this one over here I'm doing the two at the same time right so let's have a look over here 
So now, panning over to here, I'm going to mix up some uh, some polish over here, and we'll uh, we'll start mopping that on the surface. So what I need to do here, first of all, is to use some of this, which is a plum mahogany stain. Only a little tiny touch, because we're only really um, we're just giving it very fine coats, so we don't want to build up too much colour all at once, because it will go too stripy. There we go. So on my finger, you can see there, it's uh, translucent still. It's not like a block colour. It's only a tint. And we don't want it to go too red. So we're introducing a bit of green stain on there. Because that will uh, that will uh, neutralise the red and make it into more of a, a light brown colour. That's it. We only need a couple of drops of that because it's very strong. We'll give it a mix up with our, with our brush there. So we need to grab our mop again there, our, uh, our rubber, I should say. Okay, this is what's called an open rubber at the moment. Some people call it an open fad. I'm just using it as stocking it like so and then uh, and then afterwards i'll be putting a uh, an old hospital sheet wrapped around it to get this smoother finish at the very end so we're going to dip our rubber in the polish a few times to load it up right and now we're going to just start mopping it on the surface of here And then we we'll just wipe the edges around there. Now we won't be doing the same on the base parts of this because the base parts are all fine and I've touched all the all the veneering very well. But with these tops, they're in such a bad condition. That's why I've had to do quite a lot of work on them. So um, I'll be back once I've built up several coats of this. Right, so we've left it to dry now. And now we've got to denib it back again. For the last time, uh, the sides, not the top yet, but the sides and the front. So there we go. You'll know when it's dried properly because it, it flowers up. And that white stuff that come, comes off of it is what we call flowering up. So um, uh, we're going to give this the, the, uh, the sides and that we're going to polish the sides in a minute we're going to get the whole thing the whole sides and the front finished and then we're going to finish the top afterwards because as I say the tops are in quite a bad state and they've taken considerable amount of uh, abuse and and a considerable amount of more work to to make them nice and uh, shiny really um, and uh, not shiny but um, well, they will be shiny at the moment, but I'll be wire wooling and waxing them tomorrow to get them into a nice satin look. Because teak, as a rule, doesn't really get polished shiny. It should be more of a satin look, semi-matte, or a matte finish. Right, okay, so that's how that's done. You can see how it's all flowered up on there now. So I'm going to crack on with that, and I'll be back. Once that's all finished, right? Okay, so we've uh, we flattened all the sides back, and uh, now we're going to start doing the top coats on the side. So this is our French polishing rubber. It's a bit of stock in it. You can use a bit of um, cotton waste as well, but I use the stock in it, and just wrap a, a sheet around it. So then we've got to dip it into our polish here to load it up. Now some people load it from the back, but I don't bother, I just load it from the front and pat it down and then we want to start going in straight lines. Now, you don't really want to go in circles on this because this is an open grain finish and we're not trying to fill the grain up. So we're just going up and down with it.
Okay, so just wipe the edge there, come to the bottom, wipe it over there, and then we're going to put some more polish on the, the rubber. We're going to come around to the front and get inside the side bits there and along the bottom. Now, the reason why we switch to this type of rubber now uh, is because it's uh, it goes on a lot finer. So you don't get the uh, just the openness of the stockinette, which sometimes has fibres come off slightly. Right, so then we just wipe it down the edges there, down the bottom, along there, up and underneath there. Okay, then we just got to do that side. So you can see how beautiful the grain comes out when you start applying the polish again. Right, okay, so that's one coat on there. So this is going to land up having probably 30 coats on there. So um, I shall crack on with that and then once I've done them all, I shall come back and show you what they look like. So we're finally nearly finished. All the sides, uh, everything's polished apart from the tops that have got to have some top coats on. So again, P1000, um, we're cutting back the top just to get any imperfections out before we start feeding it with the, uh, with the top coats. Hey, bearing in mind these speakers are, are vintage. So the cabinets, they'll never look new, but that's not the idea. The idea is to make them look like they're in top condition for their age. So not uh, like they've been really well looked after. And that's, a, that's the idea of, of restoration, like I said before, at the beginning of the video. Um, so we're just gonna, it's only a subtle, just light rub over with this uh, P1000, it's so fine. Right, okay, so we're going to get the top coats going now. So that's that, we just want to wipe, wipe it over there. Make sure there's no rubbish or anything stuck on the surface. Just a very tiny little bit there, just there. That's it. So afterwards, what we're going to be doing afterwards is to wire wool and wax them. So what the wire woolen does in effect is it smooths the surface even more and it gives you that very lovely silky smooth finish to them. Um, so we're going to just start getting our polishing mop again, load it up, then we're just going to be going back to side to side I should say. And all we do is wipe the sides along there. Get one under slightly. I had to fit another block on the underneath of the other plinth, which I didn't replace because there was a block missing, which I've done. So. So these sort of jobs are not for the faint-hearted. They take a they take a, a long time to do. They're very time-consuming. And what I have to do is, I, while, while I'm filming this, and I stop, I get on with another job as well. You see, as I wouldn't make any money because uh, these these uh, they're just uh, so time-consuming. So we'll give it a second coat here while we've got the camera rolling still. Any questions you need to ask? Don't. Don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. There we go.
Right, so that's done there. So we're going to carry on, um, and then I'll be back once I've finished the uh, the tops. So here we have the tops finished. So all they've got to do tomorrow is be left to dry overnight. Then we'll be wire wooling and waxing them all to give it to take that shine off them. We don't want that shine, not on teak anyway. We want it to come out as a, a nice satin look, because otherwise. Uh, Teak just doesn't look good shiny. Yeah, well, it could do, but uh, these speakers would never have been shiny. They would have had a, like a satin finish to them. So I'll uh, I'll be back tomorrow to wire wool and wax them. Right, so I've finished the other cabinet, fitted it all up, and covered the front baffle already. And I flatted back all the sides and everything. So I'm just going to show you how to to do the finishing touches to this. So. We're going to take some thousand p thousand again and just lightly just just denib the surface a little bit to get any like uh imperfections of dust out before we wire wool it because wire wool will just follow the contours of the uh bits and it won't take the tops off of any little bits of anything that's stuck in the surface like dust or anything so there we go so what we use for this is a uh, is thousand uh uh four naught sorry wire wool okay and we're just going to rub with the grain we want to start on the ends there to take off the shine because the idea is we don't want the shine on there too much it will have a slight shine to it because it's going to be a satin finish but we don't want it to have a really uh, glossy finish to it as such So what I'm going to do is just turn my compressor off here quick in case that goes off while we're filming. Right. And it can go across the grain just on the ends here. Just so we make sure that all the, the shine's off. And then we just go over it. So I've just sent Alan... Who these speakers are a picture of the other two the other one in in the av room i've put it in there for now um i'll just try to drop these back tomorrow all right okay now we need to just wire wool with the grain we want to dull the whole thing down and what this effectively does as well is it makes it nice and smooth as well it gives it a really nice smooth finish on the top it was like silk Okay, so we'll just go across the grain just on the edge there a bit. Because what I'm effectively doing is going with the grain after over the top of it. So it reduces where it removes the scratches that, that appear from uh, from going with the grain. Uh, across the grain, I should say. Right. There When you look on the profile, you can see if you've missed anything and if it's still shiny in areas, which you don't want that to happen because you want it to be an even finish across the grain. Because otherwise it'll look slightly shiny in other areas than some and that won't look very good. So...
Right, there we go. Have another little go over it just to make sure it's all. Right, there we are. That's all wire walled over totally. So all we need to do is just give it a wipe down now and then I'm going to start the waxing of the of the cabinets so I'll show you how to do that now so now what we're going to do now is just to, to apply some wax to the surface now what works really well is this Simmons wax so I'm just gonna put but this is like car body wax this is but it works really well on this and, and we don't really want a high gloss finish and um, so we just work it into the wood or well, it's not actually going into the wood it's just sitting on top of the uh, polish polish surface there we go right okay then we buff it straight off again we don't want to leave it on there too long because it will uh, it'll tend to shine up too much and we don't really want that we want as as I say before we want that satin finish to Right. Nearly there. Keep turning the cloth onto the drier bits. There we go, that's it, that's perfect. You can feel the cloth just gliding over it now, so you know that you've... Uh... So I've waxed all the rest of it up now as well, so the whole thing's waxed up. So there we have a nice shiny well a nice satin shine to it so here we go that's the whole thing polished waxed so now we've got to do now is we've got to cover the front baffle in a uh, in the, the the speaker grill cloth so we're going to move on to that now so this is the front baffle I've removed the uh, the old grill cloth and uh, I've sanded the surface a little bit because there was bits of glue and that on there. Uh, and now we've got to, what we've got to do, this is the back of it. We've got to now fit our driver in there. So this is the 15 inch driver that's got to be fitted in here now before we can uh, before we can cover it. So just in case these tend to move a bit. When you're trying to tighten them up they can move a bit and we don't really want that to happen but it would be easier to to do it without that so um we'll see how we go on anyway so let's let's crack on so this is the uh the fabric the, the grill cloth fabric this is uh exactly the same stuff as they originally put on these so what we're going to do is we're going to use that um and tack that on and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So first of all, we want to remove the, the baffle off from here. Put it down onto there. When I lay our cloth out on here. So you've got lines, because this is woven, <coughs> you have lines uh, where the weaving is. So what you really want to do is try to keep the lines as straight as possible because it just gives you a better finish. Um, make sure there's no, nothing on there. Now what I've done, I've managed to tighten these up, these bolts, so that I can fit the driver in afterwards, which is so much easier because that, that driver is really big and heavy, that 15 inch one. And uh, I struggled with the other one, and uh, so this way would be so much easier. So what we have to do, is we have to temporary tack this in place. So we just check that we've got enough staples in the gun before we start, which we have. So what we have to do is to put a staple in on an angle. So it goes in on an angle. <coughs> Top and bottom. Side to side. There we go. 
okay? And now we, what we want to do is we want to put another temp in either side of the first temp. Same with this side here. Pull the fabric down a bit to the side there. Tack it in. Come up here, tack it in. Same with this here. Same with the bottom. So you have to pull this grill cloth quite tight overall. So that's what it looks like tempting. Now you get a bit of up and down with the uh, with the with the weave at the moment. So uh, as we go round tacking it off, that will go. You see. So what we have to do is we're going to start at the top here, and you have to pull it to get a nice uh, even finish. Now before they would they had glued this on, but um, I don't glue it on. It, it's so much better staking it. So if you ever need to replace it, it's easier to take the staples out than have rip all the glue off and that, which I've had to do and clean all the, the surface up of it. You see, so you can see it now. It's going up there slowly. <clears throat> right, I need to find my pinchers now. Wherever they've gone. What have I done with those? There we go. My pinchers and my staple remover. There we go. So what I need to do is just to put something on the floor down here to rest it on because it's easier to, uh, to staple it off on the floor like that. So I can see, I can look, take a look at the lines as I go along because I'm a stickler for getting things dead perfect. Now you'll get an idea of uh, of how to do this the way I'm doing it here. I'll show you it once I've stapled it off. And then what I'll do is I'll crack on with it and I'll show you it once it's finished. I'll show you how to do the corners as well. Right, there you can see the, 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 uh, the lines are more straighter now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on stapling this off and then I'll show you how to do a corner and then I'll be back soon. So I'm going to show you how to do the corner now. So I've tacked all of this off, I've done all the other corners. So I'm just going to show you how to do one corner. Um, so we stapled up to the edge there and then we've left that bit open at the moment. So all we have to do is just to pull the fabric over like that and then to turn it in. But what I like to do is just to stick a staple just in there like that. There we go. And then we just take our scissors and trim all the, the excess off there because it will just interfere with it and make it too thick on the corner. And we don't want that because it won't fit back in very easy. There we go. Take that over there like so. Pull that down nice and tight and then staple that off. Right, right so we've just got to trim this up all around now.
So, that's it. All nicely covered. But there's one more thing we've got to do. And that is to fit on the badge. Okay, so we've got some holes here through there. Okay, straight through the front there. We can find where the badge goes. So I've got the badge. I've already fitted the other one already. So this is our tannoy badge here. So this is going to go fit onto here. So we're going to come back through there and then make sure that very difficult to locate these these holes for this badge. There we go. So as we go back through there, that's the one in there. Pop that through there again. And that's the second one. There we go. You've got to be really careful not to break these as you go in there. And so easy to do that. Just poke that in there and then poke that through there again. There we go. Then that should just slide in nicely. There we go. That's our front grille totally covered and a brand new badge on there. Looks fabulous. So um, all we've got to do now is to fit the driver in there, which we'll do now. And you'll be able to see that. So here we have the driver here. Um, this is it, the 15 inch driver. Very heavy this. So we've just got to locate this in the right place because it's just four holes that this goes into now i need to make sure that it's in the right place where where the uh driver where the connection is for the uh, cable right so put that down into there that's about right there now if we go around one more that won't marry up with the other one so these are the fabulous monitor gold dual centric concentric loudspeaker so this is the 15 inch one so let me just before i do that let me just check something because this cable on this one has to go on the right side so when that's on its back there yeah that'll be perfect that's exactly where it goes all right always keep double checking stuff when you're doing stuff like this otherwise you'll put it all back together and you'll have to undo it again and then put it back together and it's a pain Right, so let's just get all this, all these put on. Finally, getting to the end of this uh, this restoration job on these cabinets. So I haven't done any restoration to the electronics on this, or to the uh, the drivers themselves. That wasn't the goal of this video. It was just to do a restoration on the. Uh, I mean, the drivers themselves are in very good condition. The only thing I would say is perhaps that the. Uh, capacitors in the crossovers uh, could do with uh, some work doing on them but they're very easy you can just unscrew the backs of these off and then uh, and then get to the uh, crossover units I mean tannoy if you send them back to tannoy they may be able to do them for you you can do them yourself otherwise <clears throat> right so God, this is so much easier than covering it with this driver on it. I'm just going to tighten these up. over tighten these just but at the same time you don't want to under tighten them either so just got to get them about right till they sort of feel like they're really there that's it Well, I think that's about it there. So, that's our front baffle with the drive unit in there. 
with our tannoy badge on. So now all we've got to do now is to fit it into the uh, cabinet there. So we'll put this down here for the minute. And then we'll get our cabinet on there. So this is, uh, let's put another piece of vinyl on, the, on this so it doesn't damage the polished surface. So we're able to do this, we're going to have to put this on its side. And get this up like this. Uh, yeah. uh. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera around so you can see it more. So, let's offer the, uh, the baffle up to the cabinet here. Um, Seriously heavy. You probably would be best if you're doing this on your own to get someone else to help you. <clears throat> Just I'm used to working on my own, so I tend to do everything. Turn that compressor off for a minute, you don't need that going. All that is is a load of noise. Right. Now that's in. So we've got a series of holes down here that we've got to screw up. So what I've done is I've put some new screws in here. Some uh, inch eights or inch tens I think these are to go into the front baffle there. Now, find my drill. This is the part where you, where you could do with someone else helping you because uh, the baffle needs to go in dead, dead tight. Right, so the bottom one needs to come out again. I need to put it tighter than that, but we'll get in this end first and then we can gradually release it and tighten it as we go along. You could put a clamp round here to hold it in, which isn't a bad idea, but... Um... Right, so let's just carry on. So I'm going to carry on screwing this up all around and I'll be back soon once I've finished it. There we go. Front baffle all fitted with the badge. Look very, very classy, very smart. All totally refinished. I'll show you the, the two together in the AV room soon because I'm going to plug them in and see what they sound like. Um, but first of all, I need to fit the insulation in there back in there so I'll crack on and do that it's pretty self-explanatory but I'll show you how I'll do it anyway right so this is how we uh, this is what came out of this which is cotton waste so we're just going to tuck that back in there again it was quite lumpy the way they'd put it in there so it's just going to go back in the same way uh, make sure you get it right into the corners down there So now we need to get our staple gun and just start stapling off. It was only taxing, tacked in a few places. As you get down to near the driver there, do you know what I could have done? I could have left the driver till last and fitted it in, it would have been easier. In fact, that's what I should have done, but there we go. This is a long, long nose staple gun. This one, so you can get into places with it nice and easy and get some staples in there, right? Okay, so that's enough there. 
So we're just going to come down here, make sure that pushes all through. Um, pull that out. Now this is quite a strange way of doing this. I, I mean, obviously this was done for a reason for these speakers. Um, but these days they, they don't go to all that hassle. They either whack a lump of foam in there to uh, damp damp the frequencies and the uh, the sound in the back of the cabinet from uh, banging around, and uh, or, or they use um, polyester, which is like a, just a polyester wadding. But the best thing to put in here is lamb's wool really that that is the best the best stuff to put in the inside that's what i've found anyway the sound quality improves it if you've got but it can be again you've got to mess about with it quite a lot to get it right so you put too much in and, and, and the bass goes you put too little in and then it, it starts to sound a bit boomy inside so it's just a matter of getting the right amount there we go. So that's just how it's done. It's pretty straightforward. It just goes in like that. So I've got to get the top and the uh, the other side in. So I shall crack on with that now, and I'll, I'll show you it once it's done. So here we have it. That's all the uh, insulation back in there. So now all we've got to do is clean the back up and fit the back on. So I'll be doing that next. Right, okay. So now all we've got to do, I've cleaned the back up here. We've just got to fit it back in, but we've got to plug this plug in first. Okay, pull that up there. Get that into place. Now this plug, it's quite unusual. It's like a four pin din almost. I don't think it's a din though, but uh, it's a form of a of a din. So that should just pop into there somehow. Can't see. That's it. There we go. That's popped in there. Quite a neat little system that is to pop that in. And uh, fluff out of there. And now we've got our back on. All we've got to do now is just to screw this up and then we're done. If I can find me screw my drill. Right, here we go. So I'm gonna screw this up and then I'll be back once I've uh, once it's all screwed up, I'll be back and show you the whole thing finished. So here are the finished speakers. Thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. And thank you for watching, guys.